Welcome to the Divine Lifestyles Podcast. I'm your host, Tara Mikowski. Together with my guest experts, I cover topics ranging from cutting edge healing modalities to hormonal harmony, to nutrition and plant medicine, to mindfulness and spirituality. My goal is to educate and inspire so you can create your own divine lifestyle. It's time to dive inward, rewire your brain, and heal from the inside out. Welcome to the Divine Lifestyles Podcast. I am your host, Tara Migalski. Today, I am joined by Richard Lermont. Richard is a dear friend and a certified human design professional, transformational guide, musician, and sound healer. He is on a mission to help young professionals navigate the challenges of today's rapidly changing world to achieve true fulfillment in their personal and professional lives. Richard, thank you so, so much for being here today. But before we dive into all of the work that you do, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about who you are. Like, where did you grow up? Who is Richard and what led you to the work that you're doing now? Mm. There's a whole lot to it. You know, I've got quite yeah. a few years here in my background, but um, I'm going to try to uh, shortcut it, you know, just go through it in, in, in short, short bits. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago and um, lived there for the first 10 years of my life and emigrated here to, uh, to New York City. And um, so life in Trinidad was, uh, was a totally different thing. It's a, growing up there as a kid, it was quite nice in, in a way of uh, being around mountains and waterfalls and, and playing in savannas and, and so on. Um, although, you know, not living with my mother and father, they actually came here and left me there with my grandparents. It was a little rough on that side because, you know, my mother would come visit, you know, a couple of times a year. And, and I just remember just falling and just being really, you know, really saddened when she, when she left. And um, so that was with me for, for many years, for 10 years until I came to America to, to live with her and um, had all of these hopes and dreams of, of our life together. And, and, um, but it wasn't that. It was something else because it was a stepfather and it was stepsisters and life took a totally different turn. And I, you know, I was, um, I just found myself um, in, in, a, in, in some sad ways as well because I didn't feel like I had my mother again. And, um, but um, yeah, stepfather didn't really want me around. So I, I one of the beautiful things that I, I did uh received from that relationship was the fact that he was a musician and had a band and I ended up playing in his band and and in his band I actually being this thirteen year old playing the saxophone. Um we we played every weekend pretty much. We played a lot in the commun in the West Indian community here in uh in New York in the tri state area and so it was quite fun doing that, you know, and um um, but then that's where our relationship, the only relationship I really had with my stepfather, was the fact that I was benefit to him in his band. Um, but other than that, at home, we just didn't really get along. And, and so I ended up leaving home early and um, went off to the college. I got a music scholarship to Manhattan School of Music and, and you know, just found myself doing, uh, doing the life, you know, at, at an early age. I just, I was moving really, really fast real fast <laughs> um i wanted to grow up fast and i got married at a very young age and it was it was um it was quite something um then i what led me to what i'm doing now is that i've, I've always been seeking and a seeker and then seeking for myself when i truly found out what i was really seeking and um it led me to different paths of Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. I ended up finding a guru and living with this in the ashram. For, you know, it was quite something. I learned a lot about spirituality and, and the different deities and all these different things about about uh, spirituality and, and meditation and and, uh, and an aspect of my inner self. Um, later on, I uh, ended up in uh, in Europe and for ten years living and got married again. And um, with a kid, and 
then found myself back here in, in the States and uh, got involved with uh, sort of sidetrack music and got involved with with decorating. I became this an artisan with um, and started a company doing um, specialty finishes um, with uh, Venetian plastering and, and, and some light interior decorating and it was uh, it was quite something that made lots of money and worked on really in some celebrity homes and, and it was just really a fun business. And then I eventually moved to um, to California and there life took on a whole different uh, a whole different meaning. I found myself getting involved with shamanism. I met this chiropractor basically I went into his office to get my back you know adjusted and a few years later I got my mind adjusted. He happened to be a been a <laughs> happened to have been a um, a shaman on top of it, and he led me down this whole path of shamanism. And it was quite something. So my world had completely turned upside down, and um, I found myself on the path again back to music. And um, but this time, music not in a jazz sense or pop music. Although I did, you know, do some groovy music here and there, but I found myself doing music really for healing. I studied cymatics which is the study of, of frequencies and understanding sound. And, and so, uh, so yeah, I left the other world of, of design and decorating and, and um, found myself down this path of shamanism and healing. And I studied uh, these, different, uh, these different paths. And I was also introduced to, to human design, this, this very incredible work by the same person, the same... Same shaman. He was um, he was studying that at the time too, and introduced it to me. And um, it took a little while for me to really you know really go deep into it. But but it's something by being around it, you know, being an apprentice and and uh, studying shamanism and this other work of human design. It was uh, I had no idea that my life was going to take that turn to become what I am today, doing this work. And so yeah, so that's the uh, that's how I that's how I got. I know. And I know your work. We've known each other for many years. I actually met Richard in 2016 when he was, we were both at a retreat, the Higher mm. Purpose Project. Yeah. And uh, you read my chart there for the very first time. Mm. Um, and that was my first time learning about human design was in 2016. And boy, um, it's such a fascinating um, process. Um, but I really want to know, was there a moment for you, like a catalyst moment where you decided that you were going to change the trajectory of your path and go more fully into this work that you're doing now as a medicine man, healer, was yes, there a indeed. moment for you? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, you know, after moving to California in 2000, um, Yes, my, my, my business, I took my business from New York, my decorative business, and, um, and took it there. And uh, it was not as vibrant as it was in, in, in New York. In New York, it was just thriving. Went to California, and it took a different turn. And so I worked much harder, and I, I did pretty good, but I worked 10 times harder, and the money was like half. <laughs> and so, and then came the... The housing crash that happened in 2007, eight, it started around that, and my business just started sinking because it's the first thing that, you know, these developers and these, you know, uh, the people would cut out, you know, the, the high end finishes. It's like that's not, uh, it's not as important. And so I, I, I took a great hit. And at that time, I was already apprenticing with, with, with shamanism and human design and learning that work. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to see people interested in my work here and they, they, they were asking for my assistance and, you know, I was already apprenticing. And so, um, um, I decided like, you know, I, I think I'm going to go in that direction. It was the, it was a calling card. It was like, because the other business was already slow. And it's like, do I really want to continue, you know, busting my butt, you know, doing that hard work or doing this other thing that I really feel called to do. And so, um, so yeah, so that's when I made that decision. Um, it was not an easy decision. I mean, uh, I still continued doing some smaller jobs, but I let go of the whole 
you know, the whole business itself and with running a crew and, and it, you know, it was a, it was a big deal. And so, yeah, I started transitioning from that point into, uh, into this, this work now. And you've been doing this work for t- over 20 years, right? Gosh, yeah. Well, it, it, just around well, 2000, well, uh, see, 2001, 2002, it's kind of when I got initiated into it. But to really say effectively, you know, after about five years or so of, of, of apprenticing, um, so, you know, around 2008, nine, it's kind of when I got really deeply into it. Yeah. yeah and, and you have a very interesting um, way of working because you kind of have a, a, an approach, a holistic approach, I like to call it, because you do, you know, you do administer plant medicine when it's needed. You do also have the whole human design component. So let's just walk the audience through like what a medicine circle like you looks like. Like we just did one together. We can talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Or you can share, I know you do sound healings, you do human design, you do um, plant medicine, and then you do it all together. <laughs> you know, we're living in in really uh, incredible times. Some of the most incredible times that, that we can really uh, imagine that we're living in today's world. And... Uh, there's so much happening, so much change. We're in a time of like incredible transition that's going on. And we're carrying within us deep, deep, deep conditioning that, that's been handed down for us for generations upon generations upon generations. And it's really so deep in our cellular structure that, that you know, we can see that, you know, when, when, from remembering what, you know, even going back 20, 30 years ago, what life was like and to what it is today. It's just completely different. When we look at our politics, when we look at our family mm-hmm. relationships, when we look at our education and all of this stuff, it's just uh, things that just seem like it's just upside down. The world is just not what it seems anymore. And so who do we turn to? You know, when we look at our leadership, when we look at our you know, uh, the authority figures out there, you know, they're confused. They're, there's so much untruths. There's so much lies. There's so much information that it's just, you know, you just can't, can't believe anything anymore. And so wh- where do we look? You know, we have to look and learn how to trust ourselves. And, you know, of my entire journey, of my entire experience, that thing that I've been seeking, it's always been that. When I, when I, when I look back at it all, I realize the deepest, the biggest uh, uh, issue, the biggest thing that's been really circling is really learning how to trust myself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I see in, in, in all of the clients and most of the people that I work with. This is what they're, they're mostly seeking, of learning how to trust their own you know, authority. And so plant medicines, you know, all the work that we do around healing, meditation, plant medicines, whether it's going on retreats and all that, it, at the end of the day, when you when you you know boil it down, you know it's uh, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to really learn how to trust ourselves, and this is what the plant medicines. That's what they do. They help to. It's an amplifier. It's a tool, and when it's used in a in a in a right way, in a right setting, in a, in a sacred way, um, it helps us to really look deep within ourselves to really bring up so much deep, deep, deep conditioning, things from our childhood, things things that go even further back and deep understanding that we, our minds, our normal minds just would not normally come up and think of, you know, we're so deeply involved in our mundane daily life around survival that we don't think of these things. And so these plant medicines, they, 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 that's what they are. They're magical in that sense. They activate and they, help us to to really release certain things that that we are holding in us that we couldn't possibly imagine and free us up to this ability to really see this other aspect of ourselves to really come back to ourselves and so i use the medicine in in, in that particular way as a tool as an amplifier Mm -hmm. to help us uh, 
returning to ourselves. Returning return to our, yeah, it's returning to our true essence. And I would love to just share a little bit about my experience with the medicine circle that we did a few, about a month ago now. One of the things that that we did, we started with a bit of human design, which was amazing. I loved that we added that human design component just to kind of set the tone to understand, you know, who we are, why we are, how we are built. So then I thought that was a very interesting way to move into the, this, you know, the ceremony for the weekend. And, um, we use sassafras and then we use DMT the next day, um, just for those who are listening. But the most important thing that, you know, I got from that weekend as well was you said something that really stuck with me. And that was the mind is nothing but a measuring tool. And we need to allow ourselves to know our design, to be able to respond in the world through our, our human design and then know when to use the mind and when to not use the mind. And I found that by learning the human design, like the charts that we did all together and by going through the journey with the breath work that we added in and the music, that I really got to understand what you meant by that so much deeper. Does that make sense? Like, it's one thing to hear something. It's another thing to fully embody that. And I find that using the sacred plant medicine can really help you to understand that, that statement that the mind is just a measuring tool that we're allowing to just go, 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 go. And it's about slowing that down, coming back into this body, understanding how it all works and really, you know, responding in a centered, authentic way. Um, it was super powerful for me and for, for everyone who attended. Yeah. You know, um, human design is, uh, is such a, an incredible system tool that's, that exists here and now for us to understand this transition that's occurring where we're experiencing a, a, a massive, massive change in, in our civilization. And one of the things that explains basically, it's like, you know, we, we're going through and I'll get to your, you know, get, get back to the mind part, but I just wanted to share this part yeah. first around, you know, what human design really shares with us is that we look at it from two perspectives, you know, from the macro and the micro. And in the macro, we could see that, you know, these something we call global cycles, how the, these transitions that we've been going through for eons and mm -hmm. in particular, cycle that we're going through that began in 1615 is coming to an end in 2027 and this cycle it's like you know it's like the end of rome the roman empire you know when it ended it took a while for it to really you know to really for the change to really occur and you know because these cycles they you know they the global cycles they're moving seemingly slow you know and it takes a while in, when we're looking at timing and based on our human timing, you know, we, we're only here for a short time. And these cycles, they're going on for, you know, long periods of time, hundreds of years, you know? And so the past 400 years, we're, we're, we're coming, we, we've been conditioned, we've been, our entire civilization has been operating under this particular frequency, this background frequency that's been holding this whole thing together, allowing us to build community, to build family, to build up this civilization with, you know, all of these institutions and all that so that we can have this life that we have today. It allowed us to do this, you know, to create the nation states, you know, to have all of the sciences and stuff that we, that we, that we have, you know, computers and all of these things. This particular frequency that, that we entered into from 1615 allowed this to happen. And it's coming to an end. We're entering into a new cycle from 2027. And so we're already seeing the breaking down of, of systems, of the political systems, the, the communication. There's so many, there's so much to it that we can't go into it here, you know, but you know, we, you know, this is something that we you know, can follow in. And, and I, you know, that I love sharing. You dive into that on another podcast. <laughs> Absolutely, we'd love to do that. So <laughs> this change that's coming, it's, um, it's, it's humongous, you know? 
and it's really important for for us to to understand this, especially our young ones. And human design is a system that's here to show us, show the young ones especially, you know, how to operate correctly in in learning how to trust their own inner authority, their own inner authority, and um, because this is what's needed in order to to truly survive and thrive in this new in this new epoch that we're, we're, we're about to enter into this new paradigm, you know? And so it teaches us basically, you know, that, that our minds is not what we have here to make decisions, to make decisions for directing our lives, for, for guiding our lives, our personal lives. The mind is only here as a, as a tool, as an outer authority tool. It's not here to be an inner authority. To be an outer authority. And when I say outer authority, I mean like, like for example, right now you're asking me these questions and I'm sharing with you information about human design as an authority. Okay? As an authority in this. And so my mind serves as an excellent tool, you know, to share this information as an outer authority. Outer meaning the mind is really focused on everything that's outside of me. Mm -hmm. Everything that's going on around me in the world, how I interpret the world, how I see the world, how I share with information, how I take information in, process the information, how I measure, or I like this, it's tall, it's, you know, it's the color, I love the size. You know, it's like driving in a, in a limousine, you know, and in the limousine, the limousine is the vehicle, it's the body. In the back seat, there's a passenger, that's the mind, okay? The mind is here to look out the window and of the limousine and see things and measure and, you know, it can calculate and all kinds of stuff. It can share information. It can call out and, oh, I like this. I don't like that. <laughs> and there's a driver. The driver in the front is something completely different. It's the driver is something that's that's lodged in our, in, in our, in right here in the body that knows exactly where we're going. And our mind is just basically here to really uh, learn how to trust that, that, that driver on the inside. And human design gives each person their specific strategy in learning how to train their mind, how to trust that inner authority. The inner authority is something that's in the body. It's not, it's not in the mind. Okay. The mind is not here to, to navigate your life. It's only here to, to be a processing system to give you information and data about what you're looking at and what you're seeing and, and so on. But in the body itself has that mechanism that, that's here to really guide the whole process so was that yeah i know very well said yeah people can call it you know your inner authority your intuitions like you All know kinds of names yeah yeah your inner yeah. knowing or whatever you want to call it your god mm -hmm. self <laughs> yeah i've got an exciting offer for all of my listeners the free Divine Daily Practices video series. Get simple practices to release anxious thoughts, sharpen your intuition, and rewire your nervous system in less than 10 minutes a day. Come on over to my website at divinelifestyles.com forward slash divine daily practices. And over the next week, you'll receive a complimentary self care system to drop into your authentic self and activate your divine intuitive wisdom. I hope you enjoy. So why do you feel, well, I know we touched on this, but why do you feel that like technologies and sciences, the economies and all the institutions, why do you think they're going through such a major transformation? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, this is, uh, this is, you know, technology has always been like a sign of, of, of progress, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, but the thing is, you know, even with the technology that we see today, you know, with AI and all of that, that's been around for a while. But, it, you know, it happens to be all part of this older system. It's still part of, you know, you've heard of the seven chakra system, right? This is the seven chakras. Most people know about that. It's, uh, it relates to the, the, this Hindu Brahman system that was, you know, that's you see in all yoga studios. They speak about these energy centers. And that really relates to um, a particular species of humans, of homo sapiens. And those are predecessors, predecessors, the seven chakra being, 
those are our predecessors. What we are considered today, we are considered nine centered humans. And that's what the human design system is all about. It's a nine centered system. And so it's really explaining to us that we, we have mutated. There's a mutation that's been going on for the longest while, for, for an entire species, for the, for the longest while. And before seven centers, there were five centered beings. Those were like Neanderthals. Before five centered, there were three centered beings. Those were, you know, the, the Lucy, you know, the, the first upright standing, uh, type of, uh, like beings that, that were standing upright. Those were all, these were all uh, the lineage of the Homo lineage, and but here we are. As you can see, it's it's been this developmental process of our species, and we are now the nine centered beings, and we're here to operate really from the inside out. You know, learning how to trust our own in, inner authority. You know, to navigate our lives to really find our way. The seven chakra beings they were here as you know as. Uh, really looking outwardly they went outward to find their authority from their leaders and their shamans and their gurus and their high priests and priestesses you know and so the reason why i'm sharing that is that you know this whole technology thing is all based on that we're seeing today it's all still based on seven centered technology it's the it's we're like at the height of the 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 seven like the ending of the seven centered world that's their technology and we're still you know it's it's important for us today but it's like it below it still belongs to that particular uh what should i say era or mentality or you know um of their conditioning it belongs to the seven centered world and but it's the it's the 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 height of it. It's like the, you know, the, the, the finality of it. And that's what we're experiencing, you know, coming to the end of this particular century that we're in right now, you know, this is all going to change, um, to what exactly, you know, that's yet to be, to be discovered, but we're, we're experiencing, you know, the, the, the final bits of that last, of that era of that, of that, uh, particular seven, centered technology and so um in answering your question um why is it changing so much uh it, it's just part of the whole thing you know we, we're everything's all based on change every we're, we're moving through space everything is moving through space and time and so change is, is the name of the game so it's all going to change nothing lasts you know that's just a it's just part of it I don't know if this answered your question, but yeah, yeah. You always talk about like what is the real transformation that's taking place? Is that when you're referencing? Is that coming out of the seven chakra system, moving into the nine? I mean, the, the seven chakras; those folks, they don't exist anymore. They're no longer here. You know, we're nine centered beings, and that transition, that transformation, it occurred back in 1781. When we cross that line, 1781 and 1781, the marker in time for us was when we discovered. It's exactly when we discovered the planet Uranus. Uranus, mm. and so prior to 1781, you know these those beings they were Saturnian beings because Saturn is what ruled the you know the the you know that that whole era. Everything going backwards was was Saturnian. We're, we're now Uranian, meaning that these particular vehicles, these bodies that we're in from 1781, from that time that we discovered Uranus, which was a marker in time for us, these are intended to, to, to last, to, with, you know, to, to survive in these bodies for at least 84 years because we're, we're following the cycle of, of Uranus. And Uranus takes about 84 years to cycle this cycle. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the intended, the, the limit of these bodies. If you take care of them really well, you can get to 84 years. You know, if you follow your strategy and, and you're living according to your, your inner authority, the way this human design system is really is here to show us how to, how to be ourselves, how to truly live as our unique selves, you know, we can, we can get to that 84 years and beyond. And we can go a little longer, you know, like, I mean, when you look at it today, 
you know, from when we crossed that line in 1781, you have more and more because because of the fact that we've, we've developed new technologies. It, it has opened up this whole path for us to develop new technologies and this new Uranian moving into this Aquarian age. Um, all kinds of technologies for surviving longer and, and um, you know, we're going to have this moving into the future, you know, ways of how we can, uh, you know, for, for, for having children, it's already developing. It's going to even develop even further because that's, um, there is something that's happening to the, uh, the fertility of our species. Now, that's a whole other subject. We, we, you know, it's going to take a lot more time to go into that, you know, so. Um, but Well, no, I mean, you're seeing that so much. You're seeing women now having harder and harder times just <laughs> by, you know, living in the conditions, you know, whether that's environmental influences, our food sources, the stressful lives we're leading. I mean, if we continue on this, we're going to be extinct. <laughs> well, in, in fact, the fact that you mentioned that, you know, our particular species, you know, this is this is gets a little bit more in the esoteric. I mean, most of what I'm saying, you consider That's that. Good, yeah. <laughs> but there's so much, um, you know, when you look at, there's so much reference to it around and when you look around and see what's going on. But our particular species, we are considered, the whole nine centered, this information that, that was, that was, received by uh, the founder of human design um and he was he was told that you know that um when we entered into this nine centered domain from 1781 you know we we're here only for a a short period of time we're like an interim an interim an interim species he called it um uh nine centered being in transitus. And so we're here actually from 1781 to 2027. That's, this was our period of time, our particular species of nine centered beings. And really to be here to bring in the pure nine centered beings who are coming in from 2027. Okay, the children coming in from that. And so yeah. we're here to bring them in. And so it, it's a much, much deeper conversation and it goes into, you know, so much information that, you know, I don't want to go there. Um, but just giving you a little highlight of it um, right now um, is that we're here to bring them in. So our particular species is, is you know, we have a, yeah, it, it, there's a limit to us without trying to go any deeper into this because it's going to, it's going to take time. And, and, and so, um, the, there, there's a there's a mutation that's actually occurring, and there's a new breed, like a new species of children coming in from 2027. And one of the things that was shared through this human design knowledge, the, the cosmology of it, is that the heating, you know, when for, when when in order for a mutation to occur, it requires heat. It requires heat. And so the heating up that we're seeing on the planet, it's all related to this particular mutation that's occurring, you know? And of course, yes, we have, you know, our species has definitely done things to, you know, to, to irritate, you know, the, the, the ecosystem. Yeah. And so, yes, you know, we are playing a role in that as well, but it goes way beyond you know, this is something that is way beyond what we can possibly imagine, or what we what we think we're doing. And so it's going to re, re regulate itself again. It's going to come back, you know, you know, when we cross this line and, and the mutation, you know, has has set in place. You know, it, it's we, we can expect that to happen. Um, but of course, you know, you know, we humans, we're going to politicize it. And we're going to do all of these different things and blame each other and. You know that's just part of the the mundane world of, of how we how we do things here you know we're still operating like killer monkeys so um this is what happens you know we're still dealing with racism we're still dealing with you know with you know owning trying to kill others for land and you know it's, we're still primitive in, in our behavior so we've, we've got quite a ways to go in 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 in, in how we're behaving you use a lot of these systems for being able to 
heal, help people heal, help people understand themselves. And you believe that knowing thyself in order is, and basically knowing yourself in order to better understand the world is necessary so we can navigate all of these changing times, right? What do you think we can expect to see when this new cycle ends? Like, do what happens in 2027? Well, we're seeing it happening already. We're seeing things breaking down. We're seeing systems, we're seeing revolutions, you know, happening globally. We're seeing, you know, lies being told, you know, between with the media. We're seeing all kinds of information that is just uh, so abundant that one doesn't know, especially the young ones, where do you go to, you know, for, for the truth? It's, a, it's about the truth, you know, inner truth. How do you, how do you access that? What is the truth? You know, these are the questions. And so, and there's so much information. There's like, there's religions, all kinds of religions, all different paths that's been around for a long time. And they're telling you to, you know, believe this and trust this and trust me. And you have all these gurus and all of these, whatever, and, you know, of all the different paths and there's just so much people coming up with all kinds of stuff. And, you know, it's like, what do you believe? You know, you know, you, you can't believe any of it anymore. And so here comes human design. Now with this whole other information, uh, should I believe this? And so, you know, it's, it's just more and more information that that's confusing to people. And so, um, yeah. I just feel like this is my, this is my mission. This is my path. And those who have the ears to hear it, you know, who, um, um, and the eyes to see and, and, um, and the beautiful thing about this system is that, you know, it's not about believing anything. It's not based on belief. Yeah. It's a mechanical system. So you have to try it. You have to put it into, into practice. And the moment you put it into practice, you, you will, you will receive results right away because you'll see it'll give you access to your own inner truth. And that's the beautiful thing about it. I'm sorry, um, can you, I think I lost your question now because I- No, no, it's okay. What are we gonna see, right? What are some of the things, you said that we're already starting to see it, the breakdown of the institutions, but like in 2027, what are we gonna see? Like, is there gonna be more shifts? Are there gonna be more rioting? Like, what can we expect? Is there gonna be more breaking down of the systems? Absolutely, we're gonna continue to see systems break down. You know, it's the end of Rome, the end of the Roman Empire. You know, um, it's this is what's this is what's coming. This is where we're headed. Um, a change, a major change in our civilization, and something new is emerging. There's a new species coming in, and and uh, you know. Uh, so, like, when way- I get pregnant, am I birthing a nine centered? Or no, that would be after. Uh, no, that it, I would be a nine centered, but this new species wouldn't happen until after 2027. So that's like my my niece's kids or my kids' kids. Right. And, and not, not everyone that that's born right after 2027 will be a, what they call raves, this new particular species. Um, and that's like, you know, we, we definitely need to do another, um, yeah. another talk on that because it's, it's really so that they can be more focused on that because we, we're kind of like all over the place here now with this, with our conversation, but, in answering your question, you know, what, what can we expect? Yeah. Systems interrupted, um, distribution systems. Um, you know, we're seeing it, you know, through, I mean, through wars, I mean, just look what's going on already in in Africa. We're seeing weather patterns that's just going to the extremes, you know, because of this heating up, you know, more fires, more, you know, the oceans and, you know, all of these things are all happening all simultaneously. And so, yes, it's going to, it's looking that way through, you know, through our mundane, again, operations of how we, we're, we're dealing with our lives and our daily lives. I mean, you have things coming up where, you know, uh, different different groups of people, you know, there, there's an in, incredible diversity that's going on in the world for this mutation to occur. But at the same time, there's also this, separation there is you know when you look and you see in the world there's more the 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 far right is rising you know there's there's 
the belief systems, all of this is all falling apart. You know, yeah. so, you know, yeah. belief systems are, are being tested right now. Belief systems, yes. Yeah, the truth. You know, what you can trust, what you can trust. All of this is going to play a part in, in our politics, and and um, and so yes, it's it, there's a breakdown. It already that, is. Right? It's already part this of is, our this politics. Is, this is just scratching the surface. And this is just scratching the surface. And you know how crazy. Let's just talk about this really quick. It's another sidebar, but who cares? <laughs> we got to flow. Um, look at what went on with the pandemic. Look at what what went on with Trump. Like the craziness that went on with like storming the Capitol and then like COVID. And it was like fear, 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 fear. And then it was like, literally, I couldn't believe this. I took my sister to get a hysterectomy at Sloan Kettering la two weeks ago now. Ooh. And I didn't need to wear a mask. Like, I was so confused. We're talking like six months ago, you eight months ago, you were wearing a mask and I'm at a cancer hospital for the next nine hours while my sister is in surgery and I'm on the floor with patients. Mm -hmm. Like I'm with my sister in the room before she's going to get like her an, an entire hysterectomy and I don't have to wear a mask. What? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah. It doesn't, nothing really makes sense. And I was like, wow. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, without, without politicizing that, you know, I mean, yeah. it was a real thing, you know, there, no. there was a period where, you know, of I mean, course. it was a real thing. And, and so, I mean, we can say maybe the vaccine probably had some kind of effect for some people, you know, because it, when you look at it, you know, it's a mixed world, you know, there are some of us who are, who are built to handle yeah. vaccines and so on. And there are those of us who are more built to handle more natural types of healing. You know, it, it's the world is, it's not, it's not one size fit all. Of and course. so, you know, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's going to work that way, but. My point though, my point though, Richard, about it was, was the system, the institutionalization or the systems mm -hmm. was that, wow, there was such a big push, right? And it was so clear and it was such a clear mindset that you must be vaccinated, you need all these things. And then it just seems strange to me that like overnight in New York City, you just didn't need these things anymore. Right, right. So that That's really what I'm talking about. I know COVID is real. Like my husband had COVID. I never had COVID, thank God. I know plenty of people have COVID and have died. I had it as well, yeah. It's the, it's almost the belief system that really like, it's the way that it was handled and the way that the systems and the institutions were pushing it. And then all of a sudden we're not pushing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, there, there can be, you know, lots of talking heads out there who are really have all kinds of opinions upon it, you know, the left and the right middle, you know, and, and my perspective and which is, it doesn't mean much. But my perspective is that, you know, the whole thing is, is it, it's definitely, it's confusing. And when something like this, a pandemic hits, you know, governments, you know, leaderships, they scramble. They don't know what the heck to do. They have to find a way, you know, to, to solve these problems. And of course, there are going to be those who see opportunity because in every tragedy, there's always going to be an, an opportunity. You know, there are opportunists who can see ways of how they can make money. And that's, mm -hmm. that's just the world of how the world works, you know, there's, you know, and so, yes, there was a big problem. They have to find a solution. And, and the solution is that they have to find vaccines. They have to find some way. This, this is what they've done throughout history, you know, with polio, with all different kinds of, of diseases and stuff that's, that's been around and there's, there are more to come. And so there's, they, they have to find this is part of their, their duty, you know, the, the leadership, the governments and so on, to find a way to really to, to calm this thing down, you know, to, to get rid of it. But there are always going to be those who are going to find ways of how they can make zillions and zillions of dollars off of it and profit from it. This is just part of our, the fabric of, of living in a world of a binary world. You know, when I say binary world, I mean, there's always this and that. There's the light and the dark, you know, there's the up and the down. And there's one always, there's always this playing off of it. And so that's what we're looking at. You know, we're looking at, 
you know, the, the craziness of this world of, 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 of capitalism and, you know, of, of how we can profit and, you know, yeah. And the fear and everything. I mean, that's a whole other episode in itself. I just, yeah. you know, I was like, wow, this is, um, very strange, you know? And I said, they're like, well, if you'd like to wear the mask and I, you know, just, I just, yeah, I was really surprised. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, I, wore the, I wore the mask at times when I was out. Because yeah. I was, there's some people that would, that how they operate. Just in general, they have a cold and they would just sneeze right by you and, and you yeah. know, and not caring. I mean, so you have a, a mixed world with all kinds of things. So one has to really learn how to listen to their own inner messaging. You know, that's mm -hmm. the whole point because yeah. now everything's and we're moving more and more into that in, into that space of where it's just cray cray, you know, totally crazy. <laughs> and so it's really important for and that's what human design is really here to teach, you know listen to your own inner guidance your own mm -hmm. inner authority and how do you do that there's a mechanism that's built into you that teach you that that gives you access to that to know what you what you can trust at all times and the fact is that your mind your mind is always looking outside and wanting to you know make some sort of a comparison well if they did it then i can do it too if they made a zillion dollars, and I can do that too. If they, did, you know, whatever, you know, comparing. And the moment we compare ourselves with someone else, we step outside of being ourselves. We're no longer ourselves. You know, we're here to be unique. To be unique, we have this. We have this incredible capacity to bring and shine our light out to the world in our way. And this is what this this messaging. This is what this this knowledge, this information is here to teach us, teach our young how to do. Because this is what we're moving into, because it's going to be even more confusing, more disturbing, more, more distortion as we move into this new, new realm, as we, as we transition into this new realm. And so it's important you learn how to trust yourself, trust your own inner voice. I love that. That's what it's all about. And you can know who to trust as well. It doesn't mean that you can't trust someone else, but you listen to your own inner guidance to let to, you know to know if you can trust that person or not. I mean, even that gets more confusing because people, you know, the lies out there are so, you know, they're getting so so good at it, you know, telling better and better at telling lies, and you know, so you know, so yes, it, 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 you have to get better and better at learning how to trust yourself. I love it. Yeah. So as we're finishing up here, and we definitely need to do um, part two. Because we can go down so many different rabbit holes. I always love chatting with you. I have amazing conversations. No, thank but you. Love what, with you. what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? <laughs> ah, gosh. It's a good yeah. one. <laughs> study, study human design. <laughs> study. Yeah. yeah uh, well, study. I mean, you mean in terms of like some words or something, but I mean, the advice that I've got really, it's really in following these the path of the, you know, the, how the medicine path that came to me. I didn't go looking for it. It came to me. I had no idea. I was on the path of meditation and shamanism and not, and not shamanism and, and following the guru, you know, like, you know, in prayer and, and all of these things. Not that I don't use those things anymore. I use those tools, you know, when it feels right for me, but, but, um, but shamanism was something that, that came to me and um, it was like a shocker. And I was like, wow, okay try that and it just blew my world open and so um so yeah so that was probably probably the best because it 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 shattered my world it shattered everything that i thought i knew and yeah. um and um and opened up something completely uh incredible it opened up this ability for me to receive human design you know because it came first mm, okay so study human design so what's next for you, Richard? And and and, and explore the the uh, the medicine path. The, the oh yeah, path. I would I would also say that too. Yeah. Yes, and exploring the medicine path. I think I would have to agree that the the medicine path has come to me as well. It's been one of those callings, and it's been the most transformational um, part of my life. Hmm. I've been able to see the world in different ways 
And there's no way that I could kind of bypass my mind because <laughs> I'm a control freak. Um, so the, the plant medicines have really helped me to navigate my mind in ways that I feel like I never could have achieved without using them. So we're advocating for people who are listening to do this in a very sacred way, in a ceremonial way with the right people. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. So Richard, I know that you have some really cool things coming up. What's um what's next for you? Oh. Yeah, well I am I am as a messenger of this of this information, of this knowledge, you know, I I I'm here to bring this to your community, to bring this to people. Um I'm constantly moving in and out of different communities and um and um yeah, different groups of people and you know performances and stuff that I do. I'm preparing right now uh, a presentation of this introduction of this information around human design and, and the, the basics of the teachings and and these changes that we're going through, along with um, uh, a musical composition that that goes with it that helps you to drop in into your into your inner being. So it's like a really beautiful array of instruments that that take you into like a sound experience while you're educating yourself with this new knowledge this new information uh for something that you can then you know uh, follow up later on through uh, online uh coaching to um in learning how to deepen yourself into implementing it because it's something that you must implement you must learn how to implement in your daily life for this change and where can people find you online to learn more about your work and to work with you privately? Huh. Thank you. Um, uh, my website is called a return to essence.com a return to essence.com. And, um, you can find me on, um, Instagram as well at Richard Learmont, L E A R M O N T. Uh, yeah. Instagram, look that up and you, you'll see me pop up. Um, yeah. Amazing. And for people who are listening, Richard and I are going to be putting together something special. Hopefully in the early fall, we're going to do a medicine circle together that will encompass human design, the breath work, breath holds, and musical composition, um, and a plant medicine journey. So, um, really excited to, to bring that to people. And I'm super excited to work with you again, Richard. I think you're amazing. And right. I can say Likewise. for anyone who's listening, I've known Richard since 2016. I've worked with him in different capacities, um, through human design, as well as through him being a transformational guide, um, during ceremony. And it's, Nothing short of extraordinary. So, no, I thank you so much. Sarah. Thank it's you. It's been quite lovely, and I am so proud of you too. And and doing this work and really, uh, you know, how many how many people that you're helping and and you do such beautiful work and and you bring such beauty to it as well. You know, the elegance and the beauty that, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's reminding people as we, you know, this work sometimes it can be really intense. You know, when you're going in and then you know looking at your stuff but you do it in such a beautiful way that you create such a beautiful environment and, and atmosphere and you're cooking oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes your incredible meals it's uh you do this really well it's such an honor working with you too oh, um, thank you so much more of that. thank you yeah. so much for being here and i can't wait to have you on again Everyone tune in, make sure you're subscribing because Richard and I are going to come back for a part two. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Thank you, Tara. Thank you for listening to this episode of Divine Lifestyles Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your episodes. If you really loved this episode, screenshot it and share it on social media. It will help us to continue to make an impact. With gratitude and love always, illuminating your path.